this presentation, we will give a preferred stock example. We're going to go through an example of distributing stock. And in this example, of course, we have preferred stock and common stock. This is going to be a common book problem type of example and a common problem in practice as well. The only real difficulty here in this type of problem is really setting up a worksheet or a format in order to go through this process. I want to point out again that the preferred stock kind of muddies the water. And if you think about the setting up of a corporation and many corporations that uh, may not have preferred stock, it's really best to think about it in that format first, meaning the owners have the common stock and that that's going to be broken out between the equity section being broken out between the investment in terms of common stock and paid in capital and the retained earnings. We'll throw in the preferred stock here to kind of mix things up a bit. And the preferred stock, remember the major benefit of the preferred stock is they're going to get paid before the common stockholders. So they don't have the same voting rights in the business, but they get paid first. And that's why we're saying it's preferred. Now note that it's not preferred in all cases. Really the preferred stock are betting on or safeguarding against problems. Meaning uh, if the company does well, we probably want the common stock because, because it's gonna benefit us in time as we'll see through this example. If the company runs into problems, then we want the preferred stock because then we get paid first. So paid first is the preferred component. However, uh, the long-term how much we get paid if there's growth may be more beneficial for the common stock. So just as we go through this problem, we'll see uh, the distinction between those two. Note, we're just gonna do this in a table format because in order to see this, we wanna see what happens over time, over year to year. So we're not gonna record uh, the journal entries here. We're just gonna say, you know, here's gonna be the distributions in year one, here's the distributions in year two. Who gets the money? Who's better off? So. Here's what we got. We've got uh, year one, board of directors declares a $6,000 dividend. So we'll say, okay, who gets the dividend? Year two, the board of directors is going to declare a $40,000 dividend. The common stock has a uh, par value of $50 and shares outstanding are $4,000. The preferred stock, we have the dividend rate 10%, the par value 110, the shares 1,000. That's going to be the information. So note what the board of directors can do. The, the board of directors, directors are the ones that decide whether or not there's gonna be a dividend. They can decide not to give a dividend. They can decide to give pretty much whatever dividend amount they want, as long as it applies, you know, it's, it's, they can do so. There's restrictions like how much is in retained earnings and do we have any cash? <laughs> Other than that, they can kind of decide uh, what the dividend will be and they could decide not to give a dividend. Uh, if, if they, once they decide and, and note what influence they have, the board of directors being in place by being voted on through the stockholders. So the common stockholders have some influence over the board of directors and therefore indirect influence over the, uh, the dividends would be declared through their voting power, unlike uh, the preferred shareholders. Once the board of directors decides to give a dividend, what they cannot do is decide that this particular shareholder gets more of the dividend than somebody else. Can't do that. They all have to be the same. And what they cannot do typically is pay the common shareholders before the preferred shareholders. So note that the common shareholders have voting right. They have influence over the board of directors who makes the dividend amount. But the preferred shareholders, because they're preferred, have the right to be paid first. That's what it means to be a preferred uh, shareholder. So let's go through the scenario. If the board of directors decides, okay, we're going to pay a $6,000 dividend, they can decide that. They don't get to decide who it goes to. It goes to whoever it goes to in a set of rules. So first, it's going to go, this is the dividend declared, $6,000. And this is how you want to set up the table, really. you got the preferred uh, the, I usually calculate the full dividend and then uh, the amount that will be allocated to the preferred stock and then the amount that is in arrears that hasn't been allocated that's still due and then the common stock. So this will make sense as we go through. $6,000 dividend. Now the preferred stock full dividend would be 11000 How do you calculate that? You just take the, you'll have a dividend rate for the preferred stock. We'll take the par value and the number of shares and just multiply those out. So we've got 
The shares are 1,000. The par value is 110 times 110. That gives us 110,000. We're just going to take that times the 10%, the dividend rate, and that's the 11,000. So in other words, if all else equal, whatever the board of directors declared, if it's greater than 11,000, then, and this you can think of this as like an if-then formula in Excel, right? If it's greater than 11,000 that they declare, then they get 11,000. Or if it's equal or greater than 11,000. If it's less than uh, the 11,000, then they get whatever is declared. In this case, it's less than the 11,000, so they're gonna get the 6,000. In other words, they get all of it. They get the full thing, meaning the common stock's gonna get nothing. Not only that, but typically they, they get the dividends in arrears, which just basically means that they're gonna accumulate upwards uh, the amount that is owed to them. So in other words, the board of directors can decide not to pay them full the full 11,000, but what they can't do is pay the common stockholders until they pay off the full amount at some point in the future. So the common stockholders are, are held hostage. They're not gonna get anything until we pay off all the dividends in arrears and current dividends. So the common stockholders for year one get zero. So in this scenario, when the dividends are low, the preferred stockholder is clearly the advantage spot here because they're getting paid and the common stockholders getting nothing. But what if the company does very well over time, then you have a higher dividend. So if the dividend's like 40,000 because the company's doing quite well, then you're gonna say, well, the full dividend is 40,000. The amount going to the preferred uh, stockholder is the same, 11,000, same calculation, 1,000 shares times the par value, 110, times the dividend rate, 10%. And that means that how much are they gonna get paid? They're gonna, for the preferred, they're gonna get that 11,000 plus the dividend in arrears or 16,000. So we've paid off all these. So these have been paid off and we paid off the current amount in year two for the full 16,000. Common stock then gets the 40,000 minus the 16. So the common stock is getting the 40,000 minus 16 minus the 16,000 or the 24,000. So you can see that the common stock uh, amount is going up as as the dividends go up. Now again, you gotta you gotta say, well, how many stocks, how many shares are out there? Four thousand. So you know you can calculate the the amount that's going to get paid per share, the twenty four thousand divided by four. But just note that uh, these type of problems will typically look like this. Will typically show in the beginning that the amount of dividend declared will not be over. Uh, the amount that's going to be paid to the preferred stock, which clearly is making the preferred stocks better off. And then as time passes, if the company does well, the common stockholder is really betting on long-term growth. Their amount will go up. Like if we paid another 40000 in the following year, or say 45000 if it went up, the preferred stock would only be 11000 here still. And they wouldn't have any arrears, so it would just be 11,000 that they get, and they would be stuck at that 11,000 all the way down. If we had 40,000 next year, 50,000, and the and the business starts to really do well, then these will stay static, and the common stock amounts will go up. So just remember, the preferred stock is not the norm when you think about the ownership. You really the norm is the common stock because they have the voting rights. Preferred stock is preferred because they get paid first and really it's hedging the bets to be on a more conservative side to bet against something bad happening, such as the dividends being below what is being stated or the, the company liquidating and going out of business in which case they get paid first. But it's, it's not as geared towards the long-term growth as the common stock, which would be continually uh, increasing in terms of the value that their stock would be as well as the value of the dividends if the amount of dividends declared goes up over time. Mm -hmm.